and will be open to the public for use. I would now like to introduce Stephen Grover, Stephen Grover and Associates, who has been the architect on the 101 bike and pedestrian overcrossing project since its inception in 2007. Stephen will provide a review of the status of the, neck of the design process. Next slide, please. Thank you, Grant. And thank you to everyone who has joined us tonight for an update about Santa Rosa's bicycle and pedestrian overcrossing project. As Grant mentioned, this project proposes to construct a bicycle and pedestrian overcrossing of US Highway 101. The city has funding deadlines. So we will be moving forward as quickly as possible to complete the detailed design and to prepare construction documents. We are designing for full ADA compliance with a width, as Grant mentioned, of 14 and a half feet between railings. The crossing is proposed for this location shown on the slide, connecting Edwards Avenue on the west and Elliott Avenue on the east. Note that this aerial photo was taken in 2018. And since that time, Santa Rosa Junior College's buildings in the lower right of this image have been demolished. The city of Santa Rosa has designated US Highway 101 as a scenic roadway. The visual character along northbound US 101 is open, flat, expansive, with a view of the Shiloh Ranch Hills. In the southbound direction, the view is equally open and airy with trees and greenery flanking both sides of the highway. At the overcrossings west touchdown, Edwards Avenue has a quiet mixed residential character with some commercial buildings near Cleveland Avenue and single family and multifamily homes westward towards Range Avenue. Key design considerations along Edwards Avenue are, number one, compatibility with this existing streetscape character. And number two, maintaining visual and physical access to and from the commercial buildings near Cleveland. On the east side of the highway, Elliott Avenue has a pleasant tree-lined character with a few single family homes on the north side and junior college buildings on the south. Design considerations along Elliott Avenue include number one, ensuring that cyclist and pedestrian circulation integrates safely with the circulation within and around the Santa Rosa Junior College campus. And number two, minimizing impacts to the heritage trees along the street, such as this large blue oak on the right. Thus, for both approaches, a key design goal is compatibility with the mixed residential character. In other words, avoiding bringing the materiality and visual character of the freeway into the neighborhoods. Over the course of this project, the city has had numerous meetings with the community and other stakeholders on both sides of US Highway 101. On November 4th of this year, the Santa Rosa Design Review Board reviewed the project and unanimously agreed with the design proposed for the main span over Highway 101. To achieve Santa Rosa community's preference for a light, airy, and modern bridge design that does not obstruct view sheds along Highway 101, this bicycle and pedestrian overcross overcrossing proposes a single pylon offset from a wide mode separated traveled way. Here is the structural pylon and deck configuration as seen from a westbound user's view. And here is an eastbound user's view. One thing to note is that for greater visual transparency and a more open user experience, we will seek approval from Caltrans to use cable mesh instead of standard chain link fencing for the portions of the bridge over Highway 101.
here is what the proposed bridge looks like from the corner of Elliott and Armory. And here's a view looking up at the main pylon. A south brown, southbound freeway driver's view at sunrise. And here is a northbound freeway driver's view. We think this bridge will become a landmark that is unique to Santa Rosa, yet preserve the views of the Shiloh Ranch Hills, as well as the views of the skyline in general, and of the surrounding residential, commercial, and academic buildings. Recently, following the environmental phase of the project, the community expressed additional interests and concerns, which are summarized on this slide. I will now discuss how the city and the project team are addressing each of these topics. Starting with parking, the community has stated that street parking on Edwards is quite difficult and that people often park in Dick's parking lot, especially at night. One of the main concerns of the community that we understand is that the project may, could make street parking along Edwards even more difficult. I should note that the number of parking spots along Edwards will remain unchanged by this project. The city also plans to work with the neighborhood to implement a residential permit parking program to restrict unlimited parking by non-residents. On the east side, there is no street parking along Elliott Avenue and the project will not impact Elliott. I'd also like to mention, however, that by working with the team that's designing the new Santa Rosa Junior College student housing in this area, we were able to increase the number of parking spaces that were originally proposed for the housing parking lot. During the environmental phase, we heard from residents expressing concerns about the bus stop on Edwards Avenue. The city has worked with Amtrak and MTA, and it was determined that to improve service for riders, this stop would actually be relocated to the downtown transit mall. So this bus stop will be removed from Edwards Avenue. In the past, some community members noted that there are discontinuous sidewalks on Edwards Avenue. As shown here, the project would touch down at the location of the star in the upper right and connect to an existing continuous sidewalk highlighted in green on the north side of the street. There is an ADA accessible connection approximately 400 feet west of the touchdown between Edwards Avenue and the Cottingtown Mall. The sidewalk on the south side of Edwards is discontinuous and the properties are already developed in this area. The city's normal method of constructing sidewalks is to wait until new development occurs on these properties. But understanding that these sites will most likely not be redeveloped in the near future, the city can seek separate transportation funding to close these sidewalk gaps. Where the overcrossing connects with Edwards Avenue, concerns were raised in the past about safety at the West Touchdown adjacent to the Dix Loading Dock driveway. Pictured here is our proposed design from 2016 of the mixing area or landing area at the bottom of the ramp. This design allowed for straight ahead travel as well as entering the drive aisle of the parking lot as shown by the red arrows. In 2020, we refined this design to restrict travel paths 
eliminating direct access to the parking lot and to the driveway to reduce the potential for conflicts between users and vehicles. We also studied travel mode interactions and we added some other safety features. To facilitate bicycle travel along Edwards, Sharrow markings circled here in green would be added to this street. Now here's a view of the same area at night. One important project goal, a design goal is to achieve light levels that are adequately bright for safety and security, yet pleasant, comfortable and context compatible. In other words, not harshly overlit like a gas station. As shown in this image, a mid-block crosswalk is recommended at the West Touchdown location because cyclists and pedestrians on the south side of Edwards need a safe place to cross to the bridge entrance. Specific design details that the public has provided input on, such as whether the crosswalk will be raised, include a bulb out as shown here, or include flashing beacons, all of those are still being worked out. Along Edwards Avenue, we will be treating the walls supporting the lower portion of the approach to make them more compatible with the neighborhood context. We are proposing a battered wall that angles slightly inward as it goes up and a texturing of the concrete surface to soften it and provide more room for the sidewalk. We are also considering vines that require climbing structures so growth is self-limiting and low maintenance. This treatment will also minimize large flat surfaces that could attract graffiti. Here's a view of the same area at night. One concern that has been repeatedly expressed is that the area under this structure could attract homeless encampments. Working with our lighting and landscaping consultants we understand how encampment and repose can be deterred by keeping these areas well lit at night and using rocks, berming, and drought tolerant plants that are nice to look at but not so nice to touch. The Santa Rosa Police Department has also confirmed that it will provide additional patrolling in this area. Now turning around 180 degrees to look east along Edwards, we see how the overcrossing passes over the sidewalk. The proposed sidewalk configuration serves to further activate this area to deter homeless encampment and to increase the pedestrian separation from vehicles. Here's the same, same area as seen from the second floor of the commercial building across the street. Now on the east side of Highway 101, the project will connect to Elliott Avenue near the new Santa Rosa Junior College student housing. The SRJC is still working out exactly how the land in this area will be used. So the design you see here will be further refined as we continue to work with the junior college. During recent public meetings, we have heard about the increasing interest in walking and biking on the SRJC campus. We have therefore carefully studied how to avoid conflicts where these multiple paths and different modes of travel converge. We will also be preventing vehicles from entering this touchdown area. You can see the bollards in this image. Here's a view of the east touchdown area from street level. Note we are able to save many of the existing trees along the street. We confirmed with the SRJC that no vehicles will need to use this entrance. So here again, you see the bollards we're incorporating to prevent vehicles from entering the east touchdown area. 
On November 4th, as I mentioned earlier, the Santa Rosa Design Review Board requested that the design team return in the future for a review of this EAST approach on Elliott after design coordination with the SRJC is further along. Finally, some community members have noted a need for wayfinding signage around the touchdowns. Shown here are examples of Santa Rosa's existing wayfinding signage, which could be adopted and used around Edwards and Elliott Avenues to help direct people to nearby destinations, such as the Smart Station and Multi-Use Trail, Cottingtown Mall and the Transit Hub, the Schultz Museum, schools, swim center, county offices, and the Mendocino Transit Corridor and Humboldt Bike Boulevard. Thank you. This concludes our presentation tonight and we look forward to your discussion. We will be happy also to answer your questions. For the sake of time, we would particularly like to hear from anyone who is new to the project and we would like to hear input on anything that has not already been covered in tonight's presentation. Thanks again and back to you, Grant. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, at this time, we would like to hear from you, the public, to receive your input. Uh, so we'll now move to the question and answer portion of the meeting. We have a collection of panelists available this evening to answer questions. Uh, on the panel, I'd like to introduce Assistant Fire Marshal Paul Lowenthal with the City of Santa Rosa Fire Department, Nancy Adams, Transportation Planner with the City of Santa Rosa, uh, Carmela Cecilio, uh, Assistant Project Manager with BKF Engineers, uh, Stephen Grover, Project Architect with Stephen Grover and Associates, and Ahmad Rahimi, uh, Regional Project Manager for Caltrans District 4. Uh, Steve Brown, before we begin, can you please review how the public can participate by asking live questions and comments? I sure will, Grant. So once uh, Grant calls for public questions or comments, as host, I will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. I will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. Your microphone will be unmuted so you can ask your question. Once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone will be muted again. So our panelists may respond to your question. So we'll go ahead and begin. The first person in the queue is Thomas. Thomas, um, your microphone has been unmuted. Uh, you can state the name, state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make your comment. Hi, uh, yes, uh, my name is Thomas Ells. Can you hear me, first of all? I sure can. Yes. Great. And uh, I am an anthropologist and a, uh, which is a sort of odd combination and a civil engineer. And I did speak at the design review, but I noticed here that, uh, and, and, you know, thank you for having a public uh, hearing on, uh, or public meeting on this. Um, I, I didn't see anything that reflected um, the aerial utilities. And I wonder if you've done an aerial utility conflict analysis with those, you know, utilities that are there. Uh, Thomas, thank you for that question. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a very good question. And I, I think it's, uh, I actually saw an email come, come through from uh, Cecilio, or excuse me, Carmelo Cecilio, this uh, today uh, regarding utility conflicts. So I'm actually gonna hand that off to uh, Carmelo. Uh, can you please uh, respond to Thomas's question? Yes, Grant. Uh, yes, we did. We've done an analysis of the utility uh, conflicts during the, uh, during the environmental phase. And we are currently making contact with the uh, the uh, utility companies who are in conflict, PG&E, AT&T, Comcast, and the city, and are 
making arrangements for the relocation and in some uh, relocation of the overhead lines and depending on the their disposition may may go underground in some locations but to answer your question yes we have looked at the uh, the footprint against the overhead lines on Edwards and Elliot Thank you, Carmelo and uh, Thomas. I, I hope that. Uh, Thomas, is it okay? Is it okay if I? Is it okay if I follow up that I was trying to find out if uh, they have an idea of the of the um, who's the responsible party for the cost of that relocation, and if they have an idea of the cost. So. Um, I'll speak to that. So there are uh, agreements in place that the city um, has mas master agreements in place with the different utilities, which the city um, uh, or these agreements identify the, the uh, shared cost. And so to answer your question, yes, the cost is shared for utility relocation in most instances. Um, as far as the specifics about uh, what the cost sharing looks like. I don't think I can provide you, um, I might be able to provide you an answer. I don't know if it'll be accurate. Um, and I believe at this point, um, as far as, the, I, I think I can give you a figure for overall utility, uh, uh, estimated overall utility uh, relocation cost. Uh, and um, I believe that is on the order of about $2 million. Um, Carmelo, can, can you confirm that or uh, feel free to correct me as well? Uh, yes, I can check on that. Uh, I don't have that number in front of me, but that sounds like the right, the correct value. Yeah, um, I guess, and to clarify that, um, the right of way phase, which includes um, any land acquisition and utility relocation, so it's it's kind of a two. Uh, there, there are two things going on in this in, in that um, I guess phase um, is estimated to cost about $2.3 million and a significant portion, and that's why I said 2 million, um, significant portion of that $2.3 million is um, expected to go to utility relocation. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. The next oh, uh, Steve, before you go to the next one, I just wanted to uh, add one last thing. Um, if you would like to ask a question through the chat, uh, we will also be monitoring the chat and um, we'll be responding to questions that come through the chat through the chat as well. Steve, go ahead. Okay. The next person in the queue is Steve Soldis. Uh, Steve, I'm enabling your microphone and you may state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Yes, thank you for uh, the time. My name is Steve Soldis, and I am the owner of the building at 1955 Cleveland Avenue, right on the corner of Cleveland and Edwards. Um, first of all, the design of the, the bridge is beautiful. I think it's gonna be a great addition to the neighborhood, but I do have some outstanding concerns. I've asked it a couple of times, and I wanna hope that you guys would answer it, but I think that they're punting a little bit. Let me ex give you an example. Homelessness. The only thing I've seen so far is you say police will be uh, uh, offering to patrol more, but that doesn't solve the problem when the city's policy is to do nothing about the homeless. So I, again, I ask what guarantees or assurances will the neighborhood have that prevents and keeps the homeless from starting or being able to do, I, I know that you're gonna do it by landscape, but landscapes gets tramped on, the plants was, can get smashed down. What are we gonna to do to assure the neighborhood that the city's not just gonna ignore it and uh, allow it like they do with every other bridge in Sonoma County? I do have just a couple follow-ups, but these are just questions. You don't have to answer them today, but just as for notes, um, parking, when they built dicks, they didn't, I don't think the neighborhood really understood what was happening and they took away the entire parking on the north side of Edwards. It hasn't come back right now, as you probably know, the parking lot is full of resident parking. What's gonna happen when dicks and cotting towns decides to 
prevent that from happening. We are going to have a parking problem. And if the bridge is already built, it's going to make it difficult to, to revisit the street and address the parking at that time. Don't you think this is a good time to address the parking prior to the bridge going in and you could design parking for more cars on Edwards, which will alleviate the problem that's going to happen in Dix down the future. Final two questions is assessing potential damage across the street. We got a big underground parking garage. What's going to happen if the property gets damaged from the constant pounding and it starts to crack? Is there going to be some type of assessment prior and after that uh, would be able to, uh, you know, keep a lookout and we can address if there is potential damage from the construction? And the final question is financial hardship. I have tenants in uh, therapy uh, that are that teach therapy or, or work on massages or whatever it might be in here. They're going to have to move out. There's no way they can operate their their business with the constant pounding while they're putting the driving the, uh, the, the the pillars into the into the, um, the ground. Does the city have a program that helps compensate for hardship for people that businesses will suffer from the construction for the two years? That's my, those are my four questions. Thanks, Steve. Um, good to hear from you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, so while um, we don't want, you know, I guess I'll start with, with your question about the homeless uh, encampment possibility. Um, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want you to feel like we're, we're punting this, but um, you know, we do take this uh, issue seriously and, uh, you know, we want to, you know, improve conditions in the, in the area by, uh, uh, you know, adding the structure uh, and also, you know, keep the business and uh, business owners and residents in, in the area uh, in consideration through this. Um, so, you know, and this isn't the first time we've heard this, um, this comment or concern. And so, you know, I, I will go back to, we have been uh, working with the uh, uh, Santa Rosa PD, and uh, you know, have uh, they've committed to patrolling the area more, ensuring that uh, you know they'll be able to reduce loitering or um, you know long-term, um, I guess, encampments. And then, um, Stephen, do you uh, is there any more detail you want to add to the uh, landscaping approach? Um, I know that uh, Mr. Soldis mentioned um, you know. Plants will get trampled over time, but I think that there are other elements as well that um, we're considering, including you know beyond just just plants. Uh, do you yeah. do you want to touch on that a little bit more? Sure. Yeah, and we, we appreciate and understand and agree that you know plants have to be maintained, and they may not get maintained, and we need to design with the assumption that they may not. Uh, so that's why we intend to uh, make the ground um, uh, surface. Uh, not inviting by including large uh, rocks. Um, that's another element that should not be able to be removed and built-in lighting to the soffit uh, to illuminate those areas and make them a little less inviting uh, in that way as well. Um, and then, as I mentioned, uh, Steve, we are also designing that space to activate it as much as possible with pedestrian activity uh, rather than leaving large swaths of landscaping under the sheltered aerial structure. And um, while I'm speaking, I should also just uh, mention on your third point about um, pile driving, we do not anticipate pile driven foundations for this project. Uh, we anticipate drilled shaft uh, foundations, which would not uh, uh, result in the kind of vibration and pounding that you were talking about. So that's that's the good news on that. Thanks Stephen for for uh, you know bringing up that point on you know uh, potential impacts because of pile driving. I was also going to add that um, the environmental document identifies that if that was a construction method to, that we were going to be using, I believe one of the mitigation measures is to perform a, an assessment you know, before and after the activity to ensure that um, uh, there were no, there was no uh, damage caused as a result to, you know, surrounding structures. Uh, 
any of one of the panelists or project team, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong there, but I do believe that was part of the environmental document. So, um, Steve, to go back to your uh, comment on parking, um, you know, Stephen mentioned there will be no net loss of parking um, on the project. Um, and, you know, as an independent project, the city is uh, currently looking at making other improvements on Edwards to make it more inviting for, uh, or make it a more inviting connector uh, for uh, pedestrians and cyclists that are utilizing the overcrossing. Um, and through that project, uh, we will also be considering potential other uh, improvements such as adding parking uh, where feasible. And um, I will say that, you know, that while that project is still being programmed, um, we expect to uh, have the two, the completion of the overcrossing and uh, bike and ped improvements on uh, Edwards Avenue, um, completing construction uh, around the same time. So there's kind of a cohesive uh, feel uh, to go to go with the completion of the uh, of the overcrossing. So, and I'm hoping that uh, the your question about financial hardship as it related to pile driving was addressed. Um, considering the project team doesn't expect pile driving to be um, a construction me method that uh, we need to use for this project. So. Great, thank you very much. Appreciate the response. You're welcome, Steve. Okay, the next person in the queue is John Sutter. Uh, John, I'm going to enable your microphone. And you should be able to uh, talk. Your microphone has been unmuted. Hello? Yes. yes, you can state your name for the record if you so choose, then ask your question or make your comment. Sure. My name is John Sutter. I live at 618 Victor Drive, um, one block north of Elliott. <clears throat> I've lived here over 20 years um, and I'm a strong supporter of the bridge. Um, um, thank you. And um, I'm three blocks from the Elliott touchdown. So um, a number of little disconnected comments. Um, I, I like the mesh idea versus chain link fencing. Um, Chain link fencing um, and prisons seem to kind of go together in the same terminology. Um, uh, the bulb out, I encourage that. I think that's a great idea. You know, keep those uh, travel distances for pedestrians as um, uh, short as possible. <clears throat> and I, I think of the um, comment of a major city. Uh, urban planner who said, if you want a successful downtown, build it around the pedestrians, not around cars. Um, so just throw that out. As for the homeless issue, um, it's an issue everywhere. Um, uh, once or twice a week, I have to go out in front of my business on Central Avenue and clean up the debris that's left by um, the homeless um, and had a number of incidents uh, it's a, it's a statewide problem, if not a nationwide problem. Um, part of the curse of having this wonderful climate of California is that it is inviting to the homeless. Um, and uh, it's, we're not gonna solve it with um, uh, you know, minor uh, changes to, to, to a structure like a bridge. Um, it's, it's a much bigger issue than that. Um, as far as um, the earth shaking from driving piles, um, I'm one block from the three-story uh, science building being built on the JC. And um, last summer, probably for two months, I heard this rat-a-tat-tat-tat-tat-tat-tat um, of piles being, uh, I, I don't think they're actually piles. I think they were um, pouring in gravel and pounding the gravel as, as well as I could tell. Um, the noise was uh, annoying. Um, as far as the ground shaking, yeah, no, no ground shaking, just uh, kind of an annoying noise. So um, I, I will just wrap up by saying, Mr. Grover, I think you're doing a wonderful job that will be a credit to um, our city for uh, decades. Um, 
I think this is going to be good for Cottingtown. It's going to be good for SMART. It's going to be good for the JC. And it's going to make something mem memorable on our freeway that help will, will help it to distinguish our city from other cities um, on Highway 101. And my final comment is, I think it would be incredibly appropriate if somehow we can tie this bridge into this wonderful resource we have of the Snoopy Museum and our history of being the home to um, the creator of Snoopy. And I don't have a specific suggestion um, as to how that can be done, but please design people. There's gotta be some way to make this um, Snoopy's bridge. And that's my comments, thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, I don't think there was a question in there, but I, we really appreciate your comments and uh, thanks for joining us this evening. All right, the next person in the queue is Jan Ogren. Um, Jan, I'm going to uh, unmute your microphone, give you permission to talk. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, then ask your question or make a comment. Okay, thanks. My name's Jan Ogren and uh, I'm a member of the Bike Coalition. And this is really exciting to finally, after so many years, um, see it. And it looks like a beautiful design. Um, I was trying to see what the roadway actually looks like. In one shot, it looked like there are two bike lanes and one pedestrian. And another one, it looked like they're kind of two bike lanes and pedest two pedestrian. So I was wondering if you have a detail of just exactly what the, um, the roadway will look like. And then the other thing is wondering in terms of for biking, uh, how is the access to the smart train? Oh, thank you, there you go. Um, and uh, you know, in terms of uh, getting over to smart, what are the other roads and do they have bike lanes and, and all? Thank you. Thanks, Jan, for your questions. Um, I don't know if we need to, uh, it sounds like your question about what the, um, the actual, I guess, uh, surface will look like as far as the usability for bikes and pedestrians was answered by uh, this extra slide here. Um, as far as the connection to the smart station, uh, the closest, um, Smart station is uh, the station on Guerneville uh, Road, and the connection, um, I believe, there is extending down Edwards um, to Range, and then um, along uh, Guerneville. Um, but Nancy Adams, our transportation planner, if you want to um, add on to that. Uh, feel free to, and I'll also add, um, as Stephen mentioned, there will be wayfinding signage um, installed as part of this project, uh, and one of the uh, destinations indicated on the wayfinding uh, signage will be the, that smart station. Okay. Right. Yeah. The uh, next person in our queue is Dylan P. Dylan P, I'm enabling your permissions. Your microphone has been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Hello? Yes. Yeah, uh, my name is Dylan Prindle. Uh, I'm really excited for the project. Um, it definitely is uh, overdue and will be very beneficial uh, in the future. Um, the crossings at both Edwards and, uh, Elliot, um, so the, the bridge will be a part of a network as a whole. So I think it's very important that, uh, traffic calming, uh, is added, um, to these streets to allow bikes and pedestrians to safely get to the bridge and connect to the rest of the network. I know that there's, uh, future plans for like Armory, for example, which I don't think anyone would enjoy cycling down right now. Um, and things like the, the bulb outs um, are very, uh, very welcomed. Um, like I said, needing to get people to and from. Uh, the wayfinding signs 
are also a part of a whole system as this bridge is. Uh, I think the wayfinding signs we have could be updated. Um, I know it's a part of a much larger thing that goes beyond the bridge, um, but they don't exactly stand out. They don't have units of measure, like distances uh, between one feature or destination at another. Uh, maybe some sort of graphic as well, displaying active transportation um, and you know more use of sharrows or signs to help promote these uh, pathways that you are intending for the wayfinding to route someone through. Thanks uh, for that's your all. Thanks for your comments, still. And I, I don't think there was a question there, but um, as mentioned, the city is uh, currently looking at uh, performing some improvements uh, along Edwards, um, and, and you know, with the primary focus on improving uh, bike and pedestrian facilities. And with those improvements, that uh, there's a high probability that we'll be uh, adding traffic calming measures as well. Um, I really appreciate your comments on wayfinding uh, as far as indicating distances and possibly even using a graphic. I think that that would go a long way with um, users and, and their uh, sense of, of uh, I guess, spatial sense uh, as they uh, use, the, use the overcrossing. Um, I also wanted to make a quick comment here um, for those of you who uh, needed the, the closed captioning. Um, I wanted to make note that uh, Jamie Smith has, has made a comment in the chat that provides the link to the, um, the project website. So um, by Friday, I think Jamie said that, that uh, this, this video should be posted. Uh, we'll have the captions on there and you can um, you know, review the video at that time. And um, if you didn't feel like you had an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment, um, please feel free to uh, contact me directly. At the end of this slideshow, there will be, uh, my contact information will be shown. So, all right, uh, sorry, Steve. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next uh, question okay. or comment. Sure. The next person in the queue is David Harris. David, I'm gonna enable your permissions. Your microphone has been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make your comment. Uh, thank you. Um, this is, uh, I can't count all of these types of sessions that I've participated in at this point. Uh, I've been watching this uh, potential for an overcrossing since uh, around 2000. And uh, uh, I, so I want to, one, raise a question and get some comment. And then I want to make a, 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 another a series after that. Um, I really appreciate the mode separation idea. It's once you see it, it's quite obvious, but uh, there are very few uh, bike pedestrian paths that uh, have accomplished that. But I would like to ask you, do the national guidelines or design organizations or Caltrans, any of them have um, you know, guidelines for this type of separation? Um, uh, or will Caltrans even comment on uh, this issue because uh, it's not really um, on their property. It's, uh, it's on the city's bridge, but it crosses there uh, right away. Is, is this an issue that will get reviewed by Caltrans? And one and two, are there uh, national guidelines or publications uh, on this issue of uh, uh, mode separation uh, in, in bicycle pedestrian uh, pathways. You can answer that now and then move forward after that. Right, yeah, go ahead. If you could comment on that now. Uh, uh, yeah, so Stephen, I, I could probably answer the, the first question, uh, first part of the question, but why don't I, I'll, I'll let you answer the, uh, both parts if, if you're comfortable doing so. Uh, sure. Um, so this type of mode separation was fused, first used in the Bay Area on the first bridge I was involved in, the Berkeley Bike Bridge, um, around 20 years ago. Um, and it was approved uh, by Caltrans for that project. And we've subsequently used it on a number of other projects. Um, 
I'm the chair of the Caltrans Pedestrian Advisory Committee. And uh, I guess it must be about four years ago now that we did an international study of mode separation around the world um, and uh, presented that to Caltrans uh, staff. Um, so I guess the short answer is uh, Caltrans is in the process of um, improving the highway design manual, design guide guidelines for um, pedestrian and bicycle facilities in many respects. And one of the things that they are looking at um, with the advice of the committee that, that I chair um, is most of um, There are many, many precedents for this and I'd be happy to share them uh, for, for this type of mode separation, I'd be happy to share them um, subsequently uh, via the project uh, website. Okay, thank you. So uh, Caltrans will actually be interested in this, even though it is. Oh, absolutely. Right, okay. Uh, oh, yes. They, they are very interested in every detail. Okay, okay. Well, uh, so the other comments I want to make are with regard to the construction time. I think the planning time has been extended on this. Uh, uh, certainly appears to me to some degree related to the fact that the uh, cable state design is uh, more involved than uh, a more off the shelf alternative of a truss uh, design. Uh, a, a tight arched uh, truss. Uh, I've made that comment in the past. But I would like to ask about the, you know, there's a two year timeline for this construction. And uh, I'd like a little more detail and discussion. Uh, it seems to me that the cable stayed, uh, each section has to be placed uh, one at a time, right? And what's it, uh, how many cables, uh, how many sections are, is that deck going to be? composed of and and how what's the timeline that once you've got the tower and are ready to start placing uh sections how long is that going to take i mean is that going to take a good bit of the two-year timeline or what is the time frame for the and the process for actually assembling a cable stayed uh uh deck across the highly traveled the 101 freeway Stephen, I'm gonna, or, or Carmelo, I'm gonna defer that question to you as well. Um, I, I can't say that we've um, developed the erection process scheme in detail. However, we do anticipate that this will be, that, that each section will be approximately 28 feet long and uh, there will be temporary supports with um, lane closures um, just individual lane closures, the entire freeway would never get uh, shut down. Um, and I would anticipate uh, a matter of weeks for the actual erection over the freeway. Maybe, maybe months, but not much longer than that. Carmelo, do you want to add to that or? Uh, the only thing I could mention uh, is that uh, we do, require the closure of 101 at night. That's to erect and remove any temporary supports for the superstructure rule that'll sit on. And then um, then traffic is open. So that's only done at night, um, not in both directions at the same time, but uh, it's staged that way. But as Stephen mentioned, uh, um, it, it will be staged so that there's always access through uh, um, through Elliot and Edwards, and only will there be temporary closures be, um, and traffic routed for the temporary supports required to support the uh, structure while it's being installed. Uh David, I hope that answers your question. Did you have any follow-up questions? Oh, well, I had gotten muted, but uh, no, I guess I will leave it at that. Um, but the the, the two-year timeline, uh, where is the time? Uh, the approaches, the east and west approaches uh, are going to... 
take uh, months each. I could suggest we could follow up with a little bit more of a preliminary breakdown on the construction schedule um, and post it on the website to provide the detail that David's looking for, at least to the extent that we can anticipate it at this stage. Well, I will add the comment that, uh, you know, getting people back onto public transit and involved in alternate transportation, the sooner the better, and a two-year timeline, if anything, could be done to shorten this. Uh, and, uh, you know, SMART's uh, next tax measure will be on the ballot in 2024, and this bridge is, with the current schedule that's shown, uh, it'll be a year after that that it gets finished. Uh, uh, anything that would show that we are making progress toward making our public transit infrastructure more usable uh, would be a positive uh, in influencing the public with regard to the utility when it takes us so long to get access to uh, the smart station on the west side there it's uh, um, that's the concern thank you david um, we are always looking for ways to expedite our our design and construction schedule and um, we are certainly you know um, cognizant of of the of the time so uh, appreciate the comment and uh yep we'll we'll uh I think we'll move on to the next next uh, commenter. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next uh, person in the queue is Eris Weaver. Uh, Eris, uh, I'm going to enable your permissions and unmute your microphone. Uh, you may state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Hi, thank you. Eris Weaver, I'm the Executive Director of the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition, and we have been pushing for this project for about the entirety of our 20-year existence. So, so happy to see further movement towards it getting done, and I'm really happy with the design. Um, Many of the things that other callers have spoken about, like traffic calming and wayfinding and uh, finding ways to make sure that the path is used for the purpose for which it is intended uh, and need our global problems everywhere, not just uh, in this project and, and other parts of the city. Um, I did want to speak to the question about getting to that um, uh, north smart station. It may not be as bad for pedestrians. I've never walked it. I only tried to bicycle it. And it is really hairy. Uh, in fact, if I have meetings up at that end of town, say at the county center, uh, or whatever, I will actually ride my bike to the downtown train station rather than that train station because it feels safer. Um, if you're going uh, from Cottingtown uh, west to go to the train station, you are on the um, north side of the road, but the train station is on the south side. So you have to pass the station, use the light, to make a either make a U-turn or do a two-stage crossing with the crosswalk, uh, and then come back uh, east to get to the station. Or what I will admit I have done, even though it's not technically legal, and I've seen other people do, is ride your bike the wrong way on the sidewalk. Um, to get to the station. It's really hairy traffic wise there. So I'm really hoping that the city um, in conjunction with SMART can figure out some uh, connector to that uh, train station that would be more friendly. And I will tell you, I have not ever seen very many people, especially very many bikes at that station compared to some of the other ones. But all of that nitpickiness aside, I just want to say how thrilled I am this project is moving along and I hope it's finished before I retire so that I can write on it during my work day. Thank you. Thanks, Harris. I appreciate the comment and um, we'll, we're definitely taking into consideration uh, ease of access to the smart stations as uh, we anticipate this overcrossing to be a, a prime connector for bike and pedestrians to the, to, to the smart stations. So. Um, thanks for your comment. Steve, are there any other um, comments or questions? 
Uh, I don't believe so, but I see that. Um, uh, well, there there is one more, two more. Uh, our next uh, person in the queue is is Thomas. Uh, Thomas, I'm going to enable your microphone, and you may state your name for the record if you so choose, and ask your question or make your comment. Yes, thank you. Uh, it is uh, Thomas Ells again, and I'm glad it's a meeting and not a uh, a public. Uh, meeting and not a public hearing. Um, that way I can ask another question. Uh, we have been following this, uh, you know, as long as Eris and, and, and before with the Transportation Land Use Coalition. And um, I was at the, the sort of two design charrettes. One was involved uh, with the downtown in, in about, mm, I about 2000 or so, I think, and uh, um, a number of, it was a RUDAT and the intent, people thought that this is before SMART, we were trying to get transportation land use is the one that uh, paid for the study to get uh, Peter Calthorpe to do this two county study and so on and uh, to get SMART. And um, uh, no pun intended there, get SMART with me. Never mind. Um, uh, but the, the design charrette, then people were talking about having the next northern station from the downtown station would be just above college and there'd be an overcrossing that came over Bear Cub, so on. And that was that station tried to communicate to them that that station was too close to the downtown and it would never be there. Smart would never make a station that close. And so the overcrossing at Bear Cup could not be done. And that's why we have Elliot and that's much better. And it conjoins, if you will, or does join to the Northern Station, which is at Guerneville Road. And if it had been at Bear Cup, then it would have been a lot further to go and much more complicated as far as the traffic regarding the, the bikeway along SMART and people to get to the actual SMART station because it never was going to be at Bear Cup. Um, so it has been a long process. So we're really glad that it's moving. Uh, but one thing I think that is maybe missing, and I'm going to ask, and I know that it's a challenge, um, is that it's been said that th there's not a th something here that identifies Santa Rosa or Sonoma County or the red, you know, like for instance, the Redwood Highway is what we've been forever. And there were redwoods along the highway and there have been a lot of uh, efforts to remove these redwoods, but uh, that was a thing that identified us, the Redwood Highway and, and the, the, the Redwood area here. And um, we don't have something with this bridge that, that does that. And that's why we proposed some art to be on it and that art was submitted to the design review board um but it wasn't considered and they said at that time they said well we didn't receive any art so we really couldn't consider any art um but that was there was a submittal of that art and to be placed on there that does relate to snoopy and it does relate to smart and the question is if it's done tastefully and you know um artistically and and not overwhelming but minimally can that be considered we want to have that considered that that art could be on there that connects both smart and the schultz museum uh that places that makes it a a place uh, making uh, structure. And that's my question in a way. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. Um, so I think to, to boil on your question is, um, can art on the structure be considered uh, or will it be considered? And um, to, I guess to, to be more specific, would um, art relative to Schultz uh, and uh, Peanuts animations be, be considered. So um, 
what I'll, I'll, I'll kind of just regurgitate what was stated at the design review board. Um, the design review board members felt that the overcrossing itself um, should be the, the, the art piece, um, the actual structure uh, spanning the, the 101, um, where the design review board members felt that art uh, would have a place with this project. Um, uh, could be at the landings. Um, however, uh, that's not um, really within the design review board's purview uh, to make a decision like that. And so uh, that, that's why I mentioned the staff will be going, staff and the design team will be going to the Art and Public Places uh, Committee in uh, February and providing an update and um, soliciting input from the committee about their feeling uh, on how art could be uh, included uh, well, a, a, if art should be included and B, uh, if so, how it should be included. And um, I, what I'll say is, I don't think just because the design review board made, uh, made a comment um, stating that, you know, the span structure itself should be the art that it completely um, rules out the possibility for, for our work on the structure. Um, but I, I do expect that the Art and Public Places Committee will take their comments into consideration when um, considering uh, how art could be, uh, how and if art uh, can be included in the project itself. Um, and I guess to, to get a little bit, uh, to talk about the Peanuts um, artistic, uh, I guess, style, uh, or the inclusion of the peanuts um, animations. Um, the way that the process has been described to me is uh, as part of this meeting, committee meeting that we'll be going to in February, we will be uh, giving a background, uh, asking input for how and if the um, uh, art should be included. And then also, you know, if we receive input uh, that yes, we should include art and you know what the parameters of the artwork inclusion should be. Um, we will then prepare a request for proposals of artists and then um, go back to, to the Art and Public Places Committee and they will uh, ultimately review and approve that solicitation, which will then be released. And um, through that RFP, we will, uh, I guess, collect proposals uh, on, uh, I guess, different ways art could be included. And I guess through that process, uh, the Schultz Foundation um, could certainly uh, supply a proposal which would be evaluated for inclusion on the project. Okay, <clears throat> our next person in the queue is Jenny Bard. Jenny Bard, I'm gonna enable your permissions, your microphone has been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask yes. your question or make your comment. Hi, thank you. Yes, I'm Jenny Bard. I live at 641 Oak Street, and I am very excited to be here again to support the overpass and the design. I think it's amazing and wonderful. As others have said, we've been waiting for the bridge for um, for more than 20 years. So it's, it's, um, quite um, <laughs> momentous, I would say. So I've lived in Santa Rosa for 35 years, mostly in the JC neighborhood. And um, I'm also currently the president of the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. Yeah, so many people did speak at the Design Review Board for the opportunity to explore how we can showcase our city's world-renowned Schultz Snoopy connection. And designs were shared with the Peanuts gang peeking over the bridge, with, which I thought were wonderful. And I uh, would love to see bicycle and other art and other creative design elements incorporated so that the bridge pathway, the entrances, the exits showcase cycling and walking. And it's not just because of the importance of, of walking and cycling as much as that would be enough unto itself, but we really need to showcase as a city, our commitment to addressing climate change and perhaps placemaking art can do that. The bridge is a bold statement. And yes, the design review board said that the bridge itself is art, but 
the passersby are not going to know that necessarily. Um, you also mentioned that you are working with SRJC to design the landing with safety of pedestrians and cyclists in mind, and I would love to know more about that and if what pu public process could be um, made available to that. As others have pointed out, especially Eris and um, Dylan, I'd like to ask uh, what additional bicycle infrastructure will be considered to make bicycling safe and inviting, such as protected bicycle lanes, lower car speeds on the key corridors and connectors so that cyclists of all ages and abilities will feel comfortable and safe riding from their home on a bicycle to and from the bridge. So uh, I am also thrilled to see this project come to fruition and um, just wanted to thank you all for uh, being a part of it and having this meeting. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I sounded like there might've been a question or two in there, um, but I don't know if, did, uh, were you expecting a response to the questions or did you just wanna make a comment? Let's see, am I still muted? No, nope, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, um, I, I, I guess I was asking about the, the process for designing um, safe infrastructure in and around the landings. Um, and also the, um, the potential for the bridge to, to be a bolder statement to the city's commitment to address climate change. Right. Um, so I'm actually going to ask Stephen, uh, as the project team has been working with the JC's uh, housing development team to, I guess, iron out uh, what that approach is going to look like and the, um, I guess, uh, ways we're going to, you know, improve uh, the interaction between the different modes. Uh, so Stephen, um, I know it's only recently that we met with the, that team, and I don't know if you have an update that you can share. Uh, that came out of that meeting? Well, the, the purview of that coordination is, is the immediate touchdown area. And I think Jenny is really asking about connecting to the touchdown areas like along Elliott and along Edwards. Am I, am I correct, Jenny? Oh, she's muted again. Uh oh. Yes, and a wider connections, not just those, but the, the major corridors leading to those streets. So I think it's back to you, Grant. Gotcha. Right. Um, so at the, I don't want to um, repeat myself. So I can talk about you know the wayfinding and the improvements that are planned for future projects. But um, I, I think that you're probably aware of that. So I'm actually going to ask uh, Nancy Adams if you're on the line. I don't know if you want to add to any anything uh, or if you have anything to add to. Um, beyond the wayfinding and um, you know future projects independent of the overcrossing we have planned. Me? Hey Nancy, yep, we can hear Grant. you. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So thank you. So just as a, as an as an introduction, um, Nancy Adams with the Transportation and Public Works Department. And so, you know, there's been a lot of questions about connectivity and I, I saw in the chat, um, you know, Jennings Crossing is, is also a, a project that we have in our capital improvement program. And as, as I don't know if many of you know, but we, we tried to get that um, constructed um, a few years back and we got the California Public Utilities Commission to do that. Um, we actually had to get that refreshed um, because it expired um, this year. So we have two more years to potentially build an at-grade crossing at Jennings there at the tracks. And right now, you know, if you're a cyclist, you know, there's, there's options. I, I, I know that Grant talked about using Guerneville Road, but, you know, as a cyclist and a, a pedestrian, it's a little bit of a longer trip, can go, can go down Jennings. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a bike boulevard and it can get you right to Jennings and the smart path. Um, and go on up either way. You can, you know, a cyclist can go north to the station or south um, downtown. So, so that's uh, an option. Um, you know, Guerneville Road right now, because of the crossing not existing at Jennings, 
we we um, we have installed some signs a couple of years ago that wayfinding signs that help you know the pedestrian get along Guerneville Road you know knowing that they can't use um, to the Jennings Crossing so um, you know that I, ideally I think getting the Jennings Crossing is really a big piece of this puzzle and that that's like the long term goal to to get that um, to make that east west connection really you know locked in um so and then on the on the east side we are actually um we we're in the process of designing uh like a, a class or cycle cycle track or, or kind of a separated facility on armory drive which would connect up to to elliot there so that that provides some connection there on the east side um you know once you get to mendocino it, it's you, you can take some choices through the JC neighborhood and, and Humboldt Bike Boulevard. You know, most riders won't, won't choose to use Mendocino. It's a little more high volume, um, speed limit's a little higher. So people can noodle through um, the JC and get to, to Humboldt Bike Boulevard, a little, a little calmer straight for, for the less experienced cyclists. So, and that gets you downtown um, as well. So. You know, it's it's a work in progress, and and I know there's several people on this call. Jenny, one of the speakers, I know she was uh, really involved when we were working on the Humboldt Bike Boulevard. But it's a it's a work in progress, and this is, I mean, this project that we're talking about now is like a, the linchpin, right? To, to to kind of bring all these little incremental components that we've been working on, um, you know, in terms of overall network connectivity for cyclists and pedestrians. So. I hope that answers your question. And I, I, I can say too that um, I just texted um, my boss, Rob Sprinkle, and he advised me that I believe that there's gonna be a crossing that SMART, um, I think is potentially gonna be putting on um, Guerneville Road just east of the station there. And I think, um, I'm not sure what the schedule is on that, but I, I was unaware of that. So I think that's something that SMART will be putting in. And I, I think eventually we'll connect to their to the pathway north of Guernborough Road, which has not yet been constructed. So I think, you know, we're, we're all working on this. Um, and um, uh, like I said, I hope that answers some of these questions about connectivity um, for this project. So yeah, uh, that, that's all for, for me right now, Grant, thanks. Thanks, Nancy, I really appreciate uh, your response. And uh, Jenny, you had one other question about how the project can be a bolder statement to the city's commitment to climate action. Um, to, to be you know completely honest with you uh, I haven't um, I personally haven't considered it I don't know um, what uh, consideration has been made by the rest of the project team at this point but it's certainly a question that um, you know we're going to take I'll take from this meeting uh, back to you know the um, internal city staff team as well as our design team and um, you know look at ways on, and, and how we can um, you know, make uh, make that statement uh, about climate action, and uh, so yeah. Thank you for the question. And I'm sorry I don't have a uh, a better answer for you at this point. Uh, Grant, I could just mention that uh, it's a small thing, but one thing that we have been looking into we've been we've been speaking with um, a number of companies that provide automated counters of bikes and heads, and. Um, we're looking to uh, find a way to incorporate those uh, in the project uh, so that the project can you know, announce itself as to how much it's helping uh, get people out of their cars. It's a small thing, but it's one little piece. That's a, that's a great, great point, uh, Stephen, thank you. Uh, and I think that, actually, that recommendation actually may have come from a community member, so. Um, all right, uh, Steve. Do we have any other uh, hands raised uh, in the in the uh, in the audience, or were there any questions that came through in the chat? Uh, I see no more hands raised, Grant. Um, oh, hold on. I hope one just went up. Um, the next uh, next person in the queue is Judy Kennedy. Uh, Judy, I'm going to enable your permissions and unmute your microphone. Uh, you can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make your comment. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, I have listened very carefully to 
um, some of the proposals around um, art. I'm here as an art advocate and um, I do see this overcrossing as a incredible opportunity to make a statement about Santa Rosa, about art, and about commitment to climate change, um, commitment to um, climate action, um, as Jenny Bard pointed out. Um, so when it came to the different speakers that, that like the, the project very, very much, and they would like to see Snoopy somehow um, embedded in the project. And I just wanna say that I don't think Snoopy is going to make a statement about Santa Rosa's commitment to climate action. But I do think that we can use whatever screening is going to go across the, um, the freeway, whether it's um, the screening that was described earlier or chain link fencing that can be utilized to create that meaningful statement, not a cartoon character, but a meaningful statement. Um, I don't know what Caltrans has as far as um, words or movable parts or whatever. Um, they have a lot of restrictions, I know, for what goes across because they don't want to interfere with the motorist. But I think simple figures somehow can be incorporated that can, that can state Santa Rosa's commitment to climate action and how the pedestrian and um, bicycle overcrossing that brings both the West and East together. You know, it's a, a, a beautiful opportunity and I don't want it wasted. I do want to see art and I don't want to see Snoopy. And I, and, and I think that Jenny's on the right track here with um, something that makes that, that climate action statement. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment, Judy. Steve, is there another hand raised? At this point, I do not see any uh, attendees' hands raised, but I do see uh, Oscar, one of the panelists, has his hand raised. Oscar, I uh, think you may have a question or comment from the chat. Yep, I've been monitoring, monitoring the chat, and there are a few that, comments that have come in, so I'll read them for everyone and the uh, interpreters. Uh, Roberta writes, thank you for separately designating travel paths for pedestrians and folks on wheels. Uh, Roberta also wrote regarding connecting to the smart station, the west end of Edwards ends at Herbert. The missing piece is a connection to the smart trail that is a short distance from the end of Herbert. I'm guessing there is a right of way issue related to the Cottingtown Mall apartments. It appears that there are perimeter driveways very close to the smart trail. Could something be negotiated for the use of those? And what is in that gap between those driveways and the trail such that it cannot be used to create a connector? So I'll leave that question there to see if um, any panelists want to respond to Roberta. Roberta, that's a good question. I, I, I'm having trouble picturing exactly where it is you're, you're uh, referring to. Um, but so I don't think I can answer the question appropriately. I don't know if anyone else in the, on the panel would like to uh, respond. Um, I'll, I'm happy to um, open it up. If Roberta would like to come off of mute, um, she could clarify her question if she raises her hand. Oh, yep, I see her hand raised. Okay, Roberta, I'm gonna uh, unmute your mic and um, 
uh, you can state your name for the record if you so choose and uh, then ask your question or make your comment. Hi, there I am. I have to unmute myself too. Um, thank you, uh, Roberta Delgado, uh, also a member of the Bicycle Coalition in Sonoma County Biker Chips. I've ridden a lot in that area. I used to live in uh, Northwest Santa Rosa. I'm really glad to see this bridge. So when you, uh, and I confess, I was looking at Google Maps and I've only ridden to the end of, of Herbert a couple of times, trying to find the way. Um, so, but so if you just look at a map, you can see that the Cottingtown apartments are near there and they're unnamed, draw, what appear to be then driveways that circulate around those apartments. And it's all just tantalizingly close to where the, um, the smart trail is. So I, I'm just not sure what, what you know, I, I haven't, I don't have direct vision recently to know what is in that space between either those driveways or Herbert that it can't be used or as a connector. I, yeah. So I am looking at that Google view, Google uh, aerial image right now. And I do see where you're referring to um, without too much knowledge other than you know pretty general my suspicion is that the um you know that's all that's private property that we uh, as the city have not um considered as a connector to the to the smart trail but um we will certainly take your comment and question um into consideration especially when we start looking at um, the different uh potential connections to uh, bike facilities uh along Edwards and to the smart uh, station. Thank you. You're welcome. So Grant, this is Nancy. Yeah, that, that I think came up as part of the North Stationary specific plan conversation. And, and you're right, that is private property. And, and therein lies the, you know, the, 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 the conversation around how, how, you know, what, if, if there's an opportunity to, to have any kind of public access across that. So, um, you know, it's cer certainly something that is still a question. Great. Thank you for adding, Nancy. Appreciate that. Oscar, did, uh, were there any other comments or questions uh, that came through the chat? Uh, there are additional comments and I'll read those. Um, if people have any other questions they'd like to ask, they can raise their hand as I'm reading. Uh, Julie wrote, this has been such a long time coming. Thank you to all those who kept up the pressure to make this project happen. Julie also wrote yes to traffic calming, referring to the uh, crosswalk across Edwards. Uh, Michael wrote, I hope the city realizes that unhoused people will probably still camp out under the overcrossing. Hostility against homelessness needs to end until this country can fix the problem and that Santa Rosa PD can't fix the problem. Uh, Steve wrote, uh, the PD cannot fix the problem. The city should set policy that prevents outside camping on public property and instruct the PD to enforce it. Uh, John wrote, directional signs are a great idea. Uh, Michael agreed that it's not easy getting to SMART, going westbound on a bicycle. Uh, Robin agreed with Eris regarding access to Conningtown SMART. Uh, Robin says the only safe, reasonable access at the moment is to use the sidewalk on the south side of Guerneville Road. Uh, Steve wrote, art is a nice... Art is nice and adds value, but this is not a Schultz bridge. There are many art concepts that can be considered and should be looking, and should be looking into after the bridge is built. Uh, Steve also agreed with Judy. A D. Waltering wrote, the overall structure as proposed appears quite artful and would bring positive attention to the city of Santa Rosa. Other forms of art could be at the landing points.
Uh, John wrote the city needs uh, planning traffic routes at each end of the bridge to concurrent with the bridge planning. Jenny wrote a bicycle counter is a great idea. Steve wrote a small few people who love Snoopy should not be directing what art should be on the bridge. This should be a community as a whole once we determine where the art should be placed. The bridge should be clean and the design as it is displayed in the proposal is a nice art piece. He writes, do not turn this into an en entrance into Disneyland with cartoon characters. D. Wolfring wrote that perhaps the screening could depict a range of bicyclists and pedestrians. And Michael wrote, cartoon characters can get a meaningful message across, but agrees that demonstrative art should be placed at the landings. Uh, John, and lastly, John and Judy, who agrees with John, uh, brings up the rainbow paint on the tunnel north of the Golden Gate Bridge as an art um, example. And that is the comments that I see. Thanks, Oscar. And thank you all uh, who commented through the chat. Uh, we will catalog the comments and uh, take them into consideration as we move through the design. Um, Steve Brown, are there any other hands raised at this time? At this point, Grant, there are no more hands raised. Okay. Um, well, with no further questions, uh, I'd like to express my sincere appreciation and thank members of the public, uh, all the panelists, interpreters, and hosts uh, for participating tonight. Uh, next slide, please. We appreciate your attendance and hearing your input on the Santa Rosa Highway 101 Bicycle and Pedestrian Overcrossing Project. As I mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, the next steps include moving into the detailed design of this project, which we expect to complete in July of 2023 and construction to begin in uh, October of, uh, 2023 as well. Uh, with the project construction timeline expected to take about two years, uh, the city anticipates uh, completion of the overcrossing in the fall of 2025 uh, when it will be open to the public for use. I want to remind everyone that we have a project specific webpage for this project at srcity.org, it's org, forward slash bike ped overcrossing. So srcity.org forward slash bike ped overcrossing. And it looks like this recording should be posted by Friday. And we will include captions on the, um, the recorded version. Uh, and again, for those of you who may have um, questions or comments uh, after the recording has been posted, please feel free to contact me um, at the contact uh, or through the contact information posted on the slide. Um, also on the web page, you'll see uh, information on project status, uh, and you also have the ability to subscribe to receive uh, email updates. That, uh, I think that concludes the meeting. And so I want to thank everyone again and wish you a good night.